What's up, everyone? Welcome to The Sarcastic Apologist. I am so excited to get back to a series that I haven't touched in a while, the What Grinds Your Gears series. We're going to have a special guest on the show today. His name is Jared Stewart. He is the pastor over at a ministry called Video Game Ministries. They are changing the game in evangelism and in outreach by taking church outside the walls of the church and engaging people where they're at. I just think it's absolutely amazing. I've done some work with Jared. We've done a couple of events together. Um, he's preached for me at CIA Boys Club, the ministry that I run here locally. Um, we've done all kinds of different things. I've helped serve him in some of the events that he's done. He's a great dude. He's a man of God, and I'm excited for you guys to meet him and find out what grinds his gears. I have a hunch. Uh, if you're new to the channel, a special welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Would you just please consider smashing that subscribe button, smash it, like, boom, slam your mouse down, click, tap it with your finger if you're watching on a tablet or a phone or whatever, whatever you gotta do, I don't know, just subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun, make sure you like, leave some comments, I'm excited to share this with you, let's get started. All right, so excited right now, you guys, because I have my dude, Jared Stewart, like I said, part of, founder of, main guy of Video Game Ministries, which my kids are low-key obsessed with, as are lots of other kids, uh, I'm sure, the world over. Jared, welcome to The Sarcastic Apologist, my friend. Glad to be here. I am super excited. Um, so, catch everybody up. The series that we're doing is called What Grinds Your Gears. Essentially, it's this. I know, because I have things that bother me, that when I look out at the world and when you people look out at the world, and if you're watching this, look up from your screen, you've now looked out at the world, and there are things that are irritating, either inside the church, things that just shouldn't be, that you just feel in your soul like they're not supposed to be that way, or outside the church, um, just things that happen in the world that you just wish the church would act on or that you could we could change together as the body of Christ. And so that's sort of what this series is. And so I'm excited to welcome Jared uh, to the show and ask him this very important question. Jared, what grinds your gears? How long do we have? So much time. <laughs> five minutes. Uh, <laughs> five minutes. Beautiful. Um, man, I think, thank you, uh, Adam, for having me on here. Um, I would say right now, the most pertinent thing that is grinding my gears is what I would maybe describe as the lack of adaptation that the overall church, and I'm not, there are churches who are doing this, so I'm not speaking for all. I'm just speaking a generality that I see in a lot of churches as I get to be a part of a lot of churches right now. The they're, it, it feels like they're not adapting to the current times and climates and statistics about church attendance. The, the, the current model, which is the old model of church, is come to us. You, yep. the person, come to church. Come to church. Come on. Invite culture. Everyone come to church. I feel like people don't really want to go to church anymore. And I think there's a lot of statistics out there that I've read that would back that very thing. So that is what is grinding my gears right now. Okay. So we hold a church service, pastor stands up there and says, go out into the world to spread the love of Jesus, be the hands and feet, whatever. And then they do that by saying, hey, you should come to church with me. That's how it's always been done. Right? Correct. So what do we do instead? What else do we do? Well, I think each individual... I think there's some things that can be said of what pastors could do, but I think there needs to be a little bit of a language shift. I think we need to go back to the Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, blah, blah, blah. and what what I've what I've started to do is is I, I looked at um, the word nations, which is ethnos in mm -hmm. the Greek, mm -hmm. and even if you think of the word ethnos, um, you probably have the is that the good uh, pronunciation ethnos? ethnos? Yeah, sure, sounds right. You're the Greek Say guy. With confidence. Um, ethnos. Um, look at just a simple blue letter Bible. Uh, uh, look at ethnos. 
uh, in the New Testament, ethnos is used as nation 64 times, heathen five times, people two times, but an overwhelming 93 times it's used as Gentiles, which we can describe as people who are not Jews. For lack of a that's that's who Gentiles are. And so when I look at the word uh, nations in English, what I've always done is I've seen like, oh, this is for missionaries, right? That's This has been my, my process. This is for missionaries. So I need to go to Uganda. I need to go to the inner city of Chicago. I grew up in Michigan, so that was relevant. Uh, I need to go to a place with a border. And I think what we do is we we let the Great Commission be a mission strategy, but it's not an everyday application strategy. And so what we do is we we look at nations and we kind of block ourselves in a border and we don't see it through the proper lens that it was intended. And I would say, based on a very clear interpretation, the best way to look at that is just simply a people group. And so when you look at people groups, well, name a people group. Yeah, so it'd be super easy to be like, black people, Asian people, New Yorkers, Floridia, like you could easily do it geographically. I think what I'm hearing you say is that's not the only way. Correct. Geographically is the word that I wanted to say, and I did perfect. I would then suggest that every single person needs to take the Great Commission and take it to heart and let it be their own personal responsibility for the people groups that they are a part of. So, like, I had this this conversation, I think, with my dad, but we were talking about how there's so many Christian conferences, and they're great, and pastors go to these Christian conferences, that's awesome. Why isn't there a, and maybe I don't know if this exists or not, but why isn't there a Doctors for Christ conference where doctors who are across all across the medical field, Christian doctors who are. Why don't they get some sort of inspiration of how they can take their practice, not just medicine, but also their faith practice and combine the two into something great that helps people in times of possibly their their biggest need and worst moments in life receive the hope and message of Jesus Christ. Like, boom. And there are doctors, there are doctors all over who are doing that. But what I'm afraid of is how many Christian doctors aren't doing that because they're not being encouraged by their church to go do that. And so so it's, it's a, Here's an invite here. Here's an invite to my church. No, right here in this moment, doctor, you have this person. You're about to cut them open for surgery. You are the church right there. They don't need to enter any four walls. They are there with you. Be the church. Three, two, one, go. Right. That and That's a doctor perspective. Obviously, for me, I, I take it to YouTube. I take it to video games. My, my ethnos is the Fortnite community. My ethnos is the Minecraft community. My ethnos is various video game uh, uh, communities, YouTube, Twitch, all of that. That's my ethnos. And so I'm trying, that's, that's why, that's why I've taken this to heart. I'm trying to go to where I know the people are rather than them, than saying, Hey, come to me. Now there's a level of, Hey, come, I think people need to be a part of a church. Absolutely. Plant yourself in a church, but they're, but I think what we're lacking, and maybe this is a this is a, a way to expand on the grind gears, is I think oftentimes we're lacking the intermediary step. How it's a very very big step for someone to go from not going to church to church. That is, yeah, it's a huge step. Is there something in between that we can offer that the church puts on that the people of the church put on overall that helps people get into the doors of the church? Mm-hmm. So. Gotcha. I guess to answer your question, that's kind of where I would go with that. All right. I think this is a conversation that should be much longer. Um, (laughs) But I think that it's also not a conversation that you and I necessarily need to be the ones perpetuating. I think that one of the things that struck me about what you said was that it's not just it's like a language shift. This isn't just the pastor instructing the people to bring more people um, so that they could hear him preach the word of God. It's people being the hands and feet of Jesus in whatever context they are. And what's neat about what you're doing is you're going to a generation of people that are flocking away from the church. 
like mm-hmm. generationally the gen z gen alpha age group will statistically be the lowest by by like big margins the lowest attendees of church like ever um right i don't remember exactly what the year was but i think maybe it was 2020 or 2021 we finally dipped as a nation below 50 percent church attendance mm-hmm. um and that's because people are stepping into um their 18 plus stage of life and so they're now being counted individually instead of part of a family and they're not they're not doing the thing that their parents talked about and their parents modeled for them and maybe their parents didn't even model it for them um which i wonder about and am bothered by greatly um so tell me what your strategy is because you're stepping into a space that like christians are just kind of not in what do you do right so we are at the moment we are primarily a uh, discipling ministry. We have after school clubs at Christian schools, um, trying to look at the current, you know, Christian elementary student and say, you are being taught and they're at great schools. Don't get me wrong, but you're being taught the Bible in the same way that the Bible has been taught for generations. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going against that. I would never go against that, but in the same way that like, I, I learned a lot of leadership lessons through sports, having you know played sports my entire life. There was, there was a common ground between Coach Al, who was also my life group leader, and, and soccer player Jared. There was a common ground. There was a lot that could be accomplished spiritually in my life, in my, in my character formation. Um, then you got the kid who plays Minecraft. You know... You, I can't tell him, well, if you kick the soccer ball this many times, you develop perseverance and doing the blah, 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 blah. I can't really do that. It's, it's more, um, how, how can I, can, how can I appeal to them the same character formation things through, uh, through Minecraft? And so that's, that's more the, the perception of the, that's more the perspective, uh, that we take on that. So right now, like I said, we are primarily discipling. We're also, uh, to various churches, Adam, we've done this, um, about uh, Mm -hmm. video game tournaments, because yes, we're still using the model, come and me, you know, I'm not trying to be hypocritical, but um, come, come to church, but we're trying to say, come to church for a video game tournament with a prize, something that kids don't really have a whole lot of access to. So that's my, that's, that's one thing that we do to help, but all of that is to help develop a relationship with the church so that we can help them with their video game strategy that they could add. But finally, all that being said, we are also on YouTube at video game ministries and we stream just about every weekday uh, with a, with an attitude of, Hey, here we are. We are in a very, very, I mean, incredibly public space. Um, invite your friends to this space, come play Fortnite with us, and we're going to create a culture. So there is the, I think everything that I've said, there's always the, there's always a come and join us. That's sure. never going to go away. Like you've, you've got to, there's, there's a, there's a step that you need to take. But yeah, my hope course. is that the step that they take is simply by playing Fortnite and being in a positive, encouraging atmosphere where they could hear the gospel. They could be uh, prayed over, prayed on stream for people. Hey, what's your prayer request? What can you, boom, pray right there on the spot. That's great. It's a great attitude. And then I'm always saying, hey, what church do you attend? I actually asked in a poll uh, and everyone shared what church or what school or something about their lives. So trying to grow. And I, I know about my community, not all of them are Christians. And that's awesome because they adhere to Christian principles and the way that we talk and the way that yeah. we uh, the way that we go about our games. Um but they're not all Christians. And so I know that there's just a journey and a story that they are on. And we are just right now on YouTube, we're that middle step. Uh, so that's that's one of the ways that we've taken my <sighs> gears being grinded and trying to do something a little bit uh, differently in that way. Awesome. Well, I'm thankful that you're doing it. It gives my kids a space where they can get together um they uh just recently jumped on and streamed with you for the first time and it was like all we talked about the rest of that day 
It's all we talked about the next. It's just like it's a really cool thing to engage with with kids on their level. Because I feel like in some ways, like the closest thing we have to that is like youth group or like Sunday school or like CIA, which is what I do. Like there's there's ways in which we create end roads, but it's still very churchy. And so what you're doing is very like missional. You're going into a territory that is not inherently Christian um, and, and bringing Christ into those spaces and, and making that a part of it. And I'm just super excited for what the future holds for the kingdom because of video game ministries. I'm really thankful that you are on the show. Um, we're going to close. Uh, it's been more than the five minutes because it's always more. I make jokes all the time about how I'm going to do a short video. I don't know what that means. It's just not a thing. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so if people want to get connected, what do they do? I'm going to put stuff in the comment, in the, uh, the description. Yeah. I'll put some stuff on the screen, but like, just tell everyone where do they go? What do they do? Yeah. Uh, first thing you can always, uh, to video game ministries uh spelled as is on youtube um you can also i think by that time by the time this this video is posted our uh our website should be up uh we'll make sure to obviously add that video game ministries.org um and there's going to be a lot of connect if you are a church and you're interested in more if you are a christian school and you're interested in more or simply a family you want to connect those are the the a couple of the best ways you can always catch me on stream and ask questions in the comment. I'm always like, Hey, hold on everyone. I got like business. To do. <laughs> so everyone knows like, I'm very quick to uh, make sure to capitalize on that. Cause I really want to help you out with whatever awesome. video game related issues may you may have. Awesome. And one thing I do want to add, you said if you're a church or you're a school, but I do want to point out there are a lot of people potentially watching this who attend a church or a school, but aren't in like an administrative or a leadership role. Don't be afraid if you're like, man, I wish my church did this to go to your church and say, hey, I just saw this thing that would so captivate the kids of our community. You should do this. Like, don't be afraid. You don't even have to do the sales pitch. Just like first you subscribe to my channel, then you subscribe to Jared's channel, and then you show them this video. You just hold up your phone and be like, watch this. You don't even have to do the thing. Um, but you could be that that connecting step for someone who's not already. So don't don't hear what Jared just said and think, man, I'm just not that. Um, because you could be the inroad that those people need. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's your way of serving Christ and connecting. And so there's just a lot of ways. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is don't get locked into just being in the building and inviting people here the amazing sage advice of Mr. Jared here. Uh, take it to heart. Meditate on what the Great Commission means to you. Um, I think that's awesome. Jared, thank you so much for joining us. Normally, this is the part where I say, make sure you subscribe to Sarcastic Apologist, but I'm going to say it twice. Make sure you subscribe to the Sarcastic Apologist, Video Game Ministries, like, smash the share button, do all the things, all of the connecty things, all the buttons and all the things. And until next time, I am the Sarcastic Apologist. That is the Video Game Pastor, and we'll see you. Bye. Later.